Hi, this is Stacy Chalemi from The Advisor, and today I have a very special guest. His name is Joshua Miller, and he is phenomenal. And he talks about sound therapy and ocean therapy and how every sound has such an impact on our lives. And he's going to go more deeper into this and explain more thoroughly. But he has such an amazing story to tell and such amazing knowledge to share with us. So Joshua, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and explain all this great stuff you were telling me right before the show. Uh, thank you, Stacey. Thank you for having me on the show today. It's wonderful to be here. And I'd say the main uh, point that I like to start with is really to invite people into uh, explore sound and music in a new way. That's right. really... That's really, I think, the best place to start, you know, because we all are very used to listening to music. At least most of us are. Right. And we kind of have a taste of what we like and what we don't like. Um, some of us like, you know, the hip hop beats. Some of us maybe the classical piano. Some of us the R&B. Everyone's got their taste, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. you, could, you could probably remember uh, different songs and different genres that you like at different points in, in your life. Oh, yeah. But um, to approach it from a new perspective, you know, to really listen more to the sound itself rather than, you know, kind of the the music altogether and be able to select certain sounds, certain instruments that you focus on, that you notice how they make you feel yeah. and start to build more of a relationship to that, I have found has some pretty powerful uh, benefits for right. for our health overall, particularly mental health yes and um over over the last couple of years i've really been diving into this um i started my my exploration in portugal uh about about six years ago and then went deeper with that in india mm -hmm. which was wow. amazing really yeah. incredible lineage to learn from there um also studied a bit in cuba mm -hmm. and mixing all of these experiences together has created a pretty a pretty exciting approach as a as a musician that I like to share with people to support them to feel better. Now, can you deep um, deeper into the concept of how music and how sound can have an improvement in our mental health, how it's so powerful that it could actually help improve our mental health? Yeah, I think. You know, one of the things I remember um, being so inspiring to me when I was first approaching sound with that intention was realizing that it's actually the first sense that we have when we're in our mother's womb, yeah. womb space. It's the first sense that we develop when we're born. Mm -hmm. And research has shown that it's also the last sense that we lose when we pass away. Oh, and wow. it's with us the longest. You know, before we can see, before we can smell, before we can taste and before we can touch. And I found that really interesting. Yeah. You know, that this really powerful um, vibrational sense is available to us so early on. And there's a lot of studies that show particularly for pregnant mothers, what you expose your baby to in the womb space does have a pretty big influence on oh, on definitely. on their development their um their cognitive development and it's um it's all about i think coming to uh to music and sound with the right approach you know yes and bringing the right intentions the right vibration to whatever sounds you're going to be making or surrounding yourself with and making sure those intentions are as high as they can be to support you right that's that's so important and I think when that is achieved, especially in that particular dynamic, you know, we're, we're referencing here, like the, the mother and the child. Yes. What is able to be felt uh, on the love frequency between, you know, that relationship just yeah. through sound, the voice in particularly. Yeah. Is incredible. Even if you're a terrible singer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because you're not really singing, you're just sounding, you know? Yes. Yes. So, that's that's one thing that I, I I remember learning a lot about, um, you know, from teachers and a lot of research that really shows the power of that, that I, I find quite inspiring. And, you know, in my own experience, not, um, you know, having that that one uh, myself personally, I, I can say that 
when I'm really able to listen deeply and relax, yeah. uh, I just feel so good. Uh, all the all the stress kind of goes away, all the worries, you know, kind of go away. And coming back to the present moment, you know, as so yeah. many other meditative practices tell us to do, I find sound to be very helpful to, you know, get us get us there. Oh, I have to agree 100 percent. Like yeah? we had nice. mentioned like a little bit earlier, you know, there are many times where I will even meditate and to relax myself. You know, um, I would put on, let's say um, I would light some candles with some powerful scents that I know affect me in a positive way. And then I will dim the lights a little bit. And then if I have, I will start journaling, but I'll do it on my computer. And then I will put music on, on my computer. And I would usually put very relaxing music that I know bring emotion to me, music that I know connects me and I will play it. And then I will, like I were mentioning earlier, suddenly I would feel emotions come from nowhere and they would just, I would hear, you know, thoughts just racing through my head and I would start to type them and I would start to write them. Cause a lot of times my journal would turn into an article that I would publish for people on um, one of my columns, but it started by meditating, journaling, using music and just connecting with the music and the music just bring in some emotions that I didn't even know I had. And sometimes the light bulb went off and I realized, wow, I didn't know I felt like this about this certain subject. It just came about like I just I hit a pain point in my life, you know, and, and it was the being able to relax, being able to connect with sound, being able to just, you know, just use my sensories and and it just helped my mind, body and soul to connect as one. And it was like just doing therapy on myself and then getting to a conclusion that I thought would be beneficial, putting it on paper, helping myself and then bringing it out to the public and trying to help somebody else. But it was it wouldn't have been if I didn't put that music on and I didn't make my put myself in a relaxing situation. I don't think I would have been able to connect with my mind, body and soul. It's just, it, it's very powerful tools. The sa sound is, I think, very powerful. I'm so happy to hear that, you know, and, and that you found that, you know, in that moment, because that's what you needed. And I remember when I was first starting to meditate, you know, sit with my own thoughts and notice them. It's, it's very hard. It's yeah. hard to do. It's very um, hard. It's, it's still hard. Yeah. And I've been doing that for over a decade now. But um, I think really where sound can be very helpful is is at the beginning, because, you know, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by life, a little anxiety, maybe a little, you know, kind of stress, mm -hmm. putting on the right sound can really help, you know, help with that. Oh, and yes, especially if you live in a city or a really loud environment, like, yes, get a good pair of headphones on and just put on something that's really the opposite, you know, yeah. um, of, of that can really help at the beginning of that meditative journey to, to focus. And I found that to be, to be really helpful. You know, now it's a bit easier to access that state, you know, in, yeah. in silence, a bit easier to be quiet and with myself, but I'm from New York, you know, New York city, like Westchester County born and raised. So mm -hmm. life, life gets pretty stressful in the tri-state area. It was it like does. <laughs> very, very, very hard to, to do that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so playing the right, the right music can really, um, can really help you with that. And, and then it's really amazing because then a lot of that stress can go away, you know, and yes. you don't have to really go anywhere, yes. but the stress can go away. A hundred percent. You know, I, I feel there were many times where I felt very stressed and I just put on the right music, the right sound, and it calmed me down to a, a, an area where the stress was released. And then I was able to focus on the problem and actually come out with a solution because oh, when wow. you're stressed, you know, I don't, people, people don't realize that 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And when you're stressed, you can't focus on anything. Your, your, your focus, your clarity in your mind is totally distorted. So if you are able to use sound and use music to de-stress for, you know, for, for a moment and actually take time to focus on what's stressing me and how could I change that? You know, what coping strategies can I do to, to solve the problem that's stressing me? But mm -hmm. during the stress, you can't do that. You have to de-stress yourself first and then look at the objective 
and then find the solution. So mm. music could actually help in that process of actually de-stressing yourself and then fixing the problem with a positive solution. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's hard for people to, it's easy for people to say, oh, but I'm not a musician. You know, I don't have any talent. I can't do that. I can't sing or play an instrument, but I kind of challenge that. I like yeah. to challenge that. And I think everyone has some level of, um, of musical or sonic, you know, yeah. uh, ability, mm -hmm. but we've, we've probably all had, you know, a, a piano teacher or a violin teacher or some type of a music teacher tell us, oh, <laughs> we're actually not that good Yeah, <laughs> when we were kids. But if we can kind of erase that, you know, and, and just forget about it and, yeah. and uh, approach it as a, as a beginner, you know, right. and have, and have some fun with it. Yeah. Then, you know, it's a whole different experience. And um, I've always played music. I've always been into it, went in and out of it at different times of my life. And when I was coming back into it about about seven, eight years ago, percussion really was my my thing. You know, it was yeah. my way, my way right. into that meditative state. Um, you can see some instruments behind me, like this one here is a really favorite one of mine. It's called a hand pan. Yeah. And playing that one just really, really chills me out. You know, it's so relaxing. And the nice thing about it is there's no wrong notes. So, I have that one actually, and okay. I love it because like, yeah. I always love music, but I was not musically inclined where I did have the piano teacher. She came to my uh -huh. house every week, nicest uh -huh. lady, but I couldn't get past London Bridge. I just, okay. I tried and tried and tried and tried. And I, you know, it's, I, I commend people who could actually sit down and start playing away because, you know, for some people it's not that, you know, easy for me, it wasn't that easy. But I loved sitting, listening to someone play the piano. But for me, it was hard to play the piano. But mm -hmm. with that drum, I can sit, I can play different notes. You can't get anything wrong. You just find which sounds you like and you play it in a, in a sequence that kind of fulfills what you need. And you actually can make a nice little, you know, um, how should I say, I guess a nice comforting uh, sound song to kind of soothe your needs in a sense, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm happy to hear you're familiar with that one specifically, because yeah. I think it's, I think it's really one of the best, you know, and um, I've, I've recorded a lot of music with that one um, mm -hmm. that I hope people can enjoy. And then uh, a few years afterwards, I, I wound up coming back to wind instruments. I also play clarinet and now I'm playing saxophone, which is relatively new. And putting that all together has been so you know, so rewarding for me as a, as a musical person, as an artist. Yeah. And, you know, I have different, different sounds for different times of the day, different, you know, moods, different feelings. Um, each one, it's kind of like a child, you know, it's kind of very individual. Yeah. And um, that, I think that has been really helpful, you know, to kind of break out of the Western mindset of have to play, you know, these scales and this order and stay used to like very traditional instruments that many of us grew up playing as kids right. to kind of go the opposite direction and um, get really into, you know, sounds that maybe you've never heard before from more Eastern cultures. I, I've definitely enjoyed yeah. that a lot studying in India um, and just, yeah, music like the handpan or singing bowls you know sounds that just really are nice sounds and yeah and have necessarily like no musical um expectations on you you know, you know I, what I, I mean yes i do because i i have i have singing bowls and when i play them and i relax them and i close my eyes and just focus on the sounds of them i you know i tell you i feel a change in the way i feel and that change could actually last a couple of days, you know, like the, and by consistently doing it in your daily routine, taking a few minutes out of the day to either practice a singing bowl or practice, you know, using the drum or, you know, and just, you know, work on different types, you know, of, of instruments, you know, mm -hmm. and I think they have the tongue drum and they have, you know, different types. And, you know, I noticed that um, I was more focused, more relaxed. I felt more in, in, in connection with my inner self 
and I knew I had a better feeling about what I was feeling inside. My intuition was stronger. You know, my mindset felt stronger. I knew exactly what I wanted and I knew the direction I wanted to go into. So I think it does even bring up your confidence level because when you know your mind and body and you're feeling good by taking care of your health, it's like you have a whole new you. It, you know, this ideal you is is starting to create, you know, the person that you really want to be and not the person that you are at the current moment. I completely agree. I completely agree. And, you know, um, I'd say, you know, for the right for the right person at the right time, taking that, I'd say a step further to like offer something in public mm -hmm. really uh kind of up levels that that confidence point that that you mentioned and as you know from your public speaking experience it's it requires a lot of of uh self-confidence to get up and do that and it's the same when you play an instrument you know yes it's, oh definitely uh, it's intimidating and yeah. i think every time i do a performance uh on a stage there's always that little bit of nervousness you know it's you yes. can feel the excitement building and then you get there and it's time to go yeah um but what a what an experience to have in life to just be um yeah more more confident in your own ability and self-reliance you know there's you know a little bit of faking it till you make it that you could do i guess but that's not going to get you like right so far so you really have to pull from within yourself and then that just makes for the best the best music i think the nervousness comes because every audience is different and you don't know what to expect until you get up there and you start either making music and or you you start speaking but then once you get up there it's that nervousness kind of flows away and then the mm -hmm. person inside you just takes control you know and it's just, yes. it's, you know, and, and it's it just, and then you just kind of go with it and it just, wherever it takes you. But I think the best accomplishment is if someone pulls you aside and says either, thank you, or that mm -hmm. was great. Or I really like that. You know, I learned something from that. And that's what really makes it all worthwhile is knowing that you could have helped somebody and you did. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're reminding me of a lot of performances actually, now that we're talking about this and, I did study for a couple of years. I don't play them too much anymore, but I studied quite intensely the Indian tablas, which mm -hmm. are a very special type of drum. And I just want to speak about that for a moment because there's something so magical about those traditional rhythms, you know, that yes. have been played for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Yes. And to learn that lineage, to learn those um, tekas, as they are called, mm -hmm. um, really was helpful for me. And to be able to listen and and know, oh, what's the difference between a, a four beat, an eight beat, a yeah. 12, a 16, a, an 11, you know, a nine, a seven, like all of these different rhythm cycles. And to notice what that does to the mind. Yeah. It's very interesting. I have to tell you that for me was probably the best sound therapy that I ever found. And I was pretty pretty good at practicing for a couple of years. Not so good recently, I'll admit it. But I feel like when I just think about that, it already helps me feel less stressed because my my brain remembers you yes. know, those um those impacts. And so that was really mostly I think about building that into life as a practice, you know. Yeah. As you were saying, like 15 minutes of of listening to singing bowls or playing singing bowls really does a lot and building that kind of consistency you know with music and sound as a practice is very helpful and I think that's the key is consistency you know a lot of people start things first they you know procrastination you'll never you'll never truly benefit unless you just start I always say start today start now and then staying consistent because sometimes people will do it for a while and then they'll skip a day or two and then they'll, you know, a day or two becomes three or four days and, and then they get out of the realm and then they lose the benefits and then they start falling back on themselves. But if you use sound therapy and you take time to meditate and you take time to listen and use the powerful impact of, of, of our hearing to actually heal your body, 
and you will see a humongous change in the way you think, feel, mm -hmm. and your connection with your spirit. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> now, I want to learn more about the, your, your project that you're doing with the sounds of the ocean. Can you tell uh, us about that? Absolutely. Yes. So about four years ago, I was leading uh, sound therapy classes in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman came to one of the classes and said, I really like your music. And I think it would go really well with recordings of whales and uh, ocean sound. Wow. Would you like to come check it out? And I said, sure, that sounds great. And I loved it. I went to his office, which was at the Monterey Bay Aquatic Research Institute in yeah. Monterey, California. And he played for me um, recordings of humpback whales, blue whales, dolphins, wow. and some other ocean sound that talk about relaxation, you know, this yeah. was uh, to the max. And I was so inspired on that day that I decided to really devote my musical uh, ability to support what these creatures have to say. Yeah. And this inspired me to create a project which is called Sounds of the Ocean that has taken many turns over the last four years. Uh, we were an audio only experience for about two years mm -hmm. and performed in California, uh, Costa Rica, and a little bit in um, uh, Portugal. Wow. And then about two years ago, wait, it gets better. About, <laughs> about two years ago, we uh, created a film and a visual kind of complement to the musical uh, composition. And now we've got a full immersive experience that really takes people on a deep dive, uh, both within the ocean and within themselves. And we're so we're so excited about this. Uh, we just premiered the launch of the film about a month and a half ago oh, here wow. in uh, Germany. I actually live in Germany now. Oh, wow. And are excited to get it around to more places. Yeah, so that is that is Sounds of the Ocean in a nutshell. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, if you send it to me, I'll be happy to, you know, anything that you want me to play, you know, for you on my YouTube channel, because I think something like this would be so beneficial uh, oh, for, sure. for, for, for people to hear. And as you were speaking, I thought to myself, you know, this would be great for people when we talked about how it could help you mentally, people with anxiety panic attacks, depression, you know, trying to, you know, people who even are addicted to food and, and compulsion and looking for ways to satisfy themselves because of their unsettled emotions, how music could actually help balance themselves emotionally and maybe help them, you know, improve in the struggles, you know, or the conditions that they're experiencing so they can move forward in life. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We find we find that people uh, have a deeply restful and healing experience at these um, at these events. We've done um, a lot of live shows as a live performance with music and also dance and visual uh, imagery, of course. Mm -hmm. And now with the film, you know, format that's not going to be live anymore. We're so excited to help so many more people, you know, yeah. and just be able to get that out there. And what I'm finding too that's so interesting is um, the places that are really resonating the most so far are not uh, close to the ocean. You know, it's it's cities and communities that don't have that access every day. You know, yes. that that are really kind of wanting to feel. You know, the beauty and the magic of uh, the underwater environment um, yeah. on a deeper deeper level. And I grew up scuba diving a lot and really building that uh, connection, you know, to life underwater. So it's very familiar to me, but I realize not everyone's going to do that in their life. And, right. you know, this is a way to kind of bring what that feels like, you know, to, to those types of places and those communities yeah. and really raise awareness around what's happening as well. Because of course there is a, an amazing wellness experience and a therapeutic effect that this can have it's also important to realize like what we're doing you know by our actions and yes. so in addition to supporting people to feel better we want people to also 
support the planet to feel better. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. That's kind of the win-win there. And um, I, I'm excited about that. It's really, it's really starting to happen. So would love to share some of that on your channel for sure. And send people over to our website, which is um, soundsoftheocean.com and get the, get the magic over, over your way. Yeah. I'd love that. And do you have, do you have audios or videos that people could watch on your website? Like what do you have available on that website? Can you tell our yes. audience? Yes, we do. We have, we have some content that people can watch for free on YouTube. We have our full um, tour dates of upcoming performances and a few tracks that you can download um, through the music store and some of those uh, downloads are actually going to support ocean charities. Oh, right now nice! I like until, that. Um, September this year, so we're um, we're always working with different NGOs. So the music that's available for download will directly go to support these ocean groups. Oh, I like that a lot because if we don't take care of our environment, we're not going to have these beautiful, you know, natural, you know, things in our lives because they won't be here if we don't take care of them. We really have to nurture our environment and nurture the animals in our environment, the ocean waters, everything around us, the trees and so forth, because it's, you know, and it's funny because it, during COVID, when we were all in lockdown, our environment actually got better. Even the ozone layer closed. So, That's right. you know, it's like, you know, we have to learn how to be productive, but not abuse the environment, you know, while we are productive, you know, in trying to, you know, serve the people who live on this planet. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we're, we're really focused on building community right now and raising this awareness. So we're focused on distributing the film to planetariums. Actually, it's designed for. Oh, very cool full dome spaces um yeah hopefully we'll be coming to to new jersey pretty soon and be able to really put people in the sea and have it be above them you know in yeah that environment and get people you know out of the house and going to those theaters for an experience as a shared you know virtual reality uh, concept and we're also of course working on some material that people can watch at home you know if they don't want to want to go out for the night but um, I think now that the pandemic is is over, you know, a lot of us are feeling a bit more social. Yes. again. So mm -hmm. it's good to inspire that, you know, because I think the connection part is also very important for for our health and well-being. Um, but we're kind of looking at both approaches there to, you know, support people that go out and have a night, at the planetarium, maybe take a, you know, a friend or a loved one or, yeah. or your kids. You know, this yeah. is a great experience for kids. And um, come see either a live performance or the or the movie. And you could actually make this like a family affair where you could teach your kids the value of sound therapy and then show them how to incorporate it into their lives also. Absolutely. Yeah, we're actually starting to do workshops. Um, as I mentioned, I live here in Germany and we're working with a few science centers here and doing like uh, school programming that is a little bit more interactive. Yeah. And sometimes we like to... Um, include like a beach cleanup or river cleanup, you know, and then yeah. the kids can kind of talk about what they find and understand where it came from and just yeah. pass on that kind of educational message. So yeah, we see a lot of value in this at multiple levels and are excited to be able to expand, you know, and do this work. You know, as a speaker, I could see this as a great virtual presentation or a great virtual workshop because those things are thriving right now. And anyone in the world could actually tap into your stuff, you know, while you present it and learn, you know, how to incorporate it into their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great idea. Now, if people wanted to start sound therapy and incorporate it into their lives, what are some tips? What are some suggestions to tell people, okay, where do I start? Well, this is what you should start with and this is how you should begin. Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, what I always like to say to people who are just starting out is really keep it simple. You know, it's easy to get things uh, overcomplicated and yes. start looking up, you know, on Google and uh, right. wanted to understand like, well, how does it work or, right. or, the, or the why, you know, yeah. why does it work? Because we're all, I think, very used to 
that process when we start something new is, okay, I'm right. going to under, understand the theory of it and then put it into practice. But actually, music and sound, it works better the other way. Yes, I agree. In my opinion, you know? No, I agree it's with more you. Of a, it's my opinion, but it's it's more of a felt sense. So you got to feel what you are connecting to, you know, yes. in the music and sound realm. Notice what works for you. Yeah. Keep it really simple. Do you like it? Does it make you feel good? Then do more of that. Right. If, if it doesn't, do less of that, you know? Yeah. Um, keep it super simple. And then maybe, you know, after a while, if you're interested to understand why, yeah. Do do some research. You can you can take a class, you know, you can email me. Um, I'd be happy to to help with that journey for anyone. Um, you know, and really seek out that. I'd say expert, you know, guidance and advice. Right. But um, yeah, for people just getting started, like I was mentioning the handpan was kind of my way in. Yeah. I just watched that on videos of guys playing that on YouTube, you know, right. and, and I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> it was that simple. And, and it's amazing because sometimes YouTube, you know, they have a lot of the how to's and it's, you know, you could learn a lot just by going on some of their videos and just learning exactly how to start with the, with the drums and start with, you know, even the tongue yeah. drum or different types of instruments and, and incorporate it into your daily routine. It's true. Yeah. And I, and I would say the other thing is that like, you have to be really patient with yourself because, you know, like anything you're starting out. For the first time as an adult, you have to like give yourself permission to be a kid again. Yeah. And approach it with that freedom, which is right. hard to do. It is hard to do. And so, I, I I tell people too, you know, it's okay to go back and, and be a kid. Some people have missed their childhood in life. It's okay to go backwards. It's okay to be a kid, enjoy life, live now and, and, you know, do the things that bring joy to you. You know, if you were a kid and there are certain things that, you know, that brought joy, but then we had to become adults and, you know, be responsible. And we didn't get to do a lot of the stuff that we really enjoyed as a kid, bring it back into your life, you know, or if there are th things you wanted to do, but didn't get to do, you know, bring it back, enjoy their childhood. Absolutely. And and to do that with music is so enriching. I, I have to say, you know, I, I I mentioned I traveled a lot and got really into a lot of outdoor activities, a lot of um, yeah. hiking, mountain climbing, um, surfing. I, I got really into surfing for a while and I was so lucky to be able to do all that stuff. And then one mm -hmm. day I realized like, what happens? What happens if I get hurt? Like, I can't do any of this anymore. Right. You know? And what else would I do that I enjoy? Yeah. And, and that's when I really started coming back to the music side of things. And it's so enriching and so available, like all the time. Yeah. You know? yes. Which is so nice. It's such a, it's a, it's a totally free uh, mode of therapy. Yes. <laughs> really. And, and it really some people is. use it while they're sleeping. You know, they have the sounds going on while they sleep. And right. it gives them a better, you know, nightful sleep. They can reach their, you know, their REM and, you know, it relaxes them, you know, it gets to that point, even the sounds of the waves, you know, that's one thing that love people love is, is the sound of the ocean. That's right. That's right. It's excellent, excellent for sleep as well. And putting your kids to sleep, if you have yes. little ones, yes, it's very, very useful for that. So I'm, I'm a big fan. Big fan of anyone who wants to use sound in that in that way. Now remind everybody your website. Where can they go to, to have your access to your website? The best place to go is soundsoftheocean.com. Mm -hmm. That has the most material on it. And we also have a mailing list, which is great to sign up for because we do have a lot of upcoming events. And I also have my personal website, which is joshuasammiller.com. Excellent. You know, Joshua, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I think you provided such amazing information and I, I can't wait to listen to some of your videos and some of your audios. So I'm very excited, but thank you for, you know, you explaining to everybody the value of sound therapy and the value of, you know, sound in general and how it could play such an impact on the way we think, feel, and how we live our lives. Oh, thank you so much, Stacey. It's a real pleasure to be here and I look forward to stay in touch. Yes, definitely. Definitely. You have a great day.